Afterwards, Juliana. Thank you. Guys, we're going to be reacting to the difference between the Bible and the Quran. Mm -hmm. Guys, I brought my scholars here that like that actually good with the Bible. So, mm -hmm. guys, let's get straight into this. Yesterday you proved that the Bible was not the word of God. How could you now quote the Bible to predict the coming of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Please explain. Yesterday was a debate. A format had been laid out. Originally it was 50 minutes, 60 minutes and 10. Both sides had 60-60. But the format was, whoever speaks first has 10 minutes at the end. Because every advantage has a disadvantage. So both speakers speak 60 minutes each. Now, with that format, you have no time to explain each and every position. So what is the Bible? So what do we consider the Bible to be? As a whole, per se, we say this is not the book of God. And I proved it. According to all reasoning, according to the book itself, the internal evidence that Moses didn't write the books attributed to him, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John didn't write the books attributed to them, not only is it not the book of God, but it's not even the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. You're talking about 24,000 manuscripts, I challenge you, there's no two are identical. So you've got 24,000 different Gospels. Which one? You just pick, took a pick that suited you, you accepted it. Who authorized you? Council of Nisi. They said, we take this, we take that, we take that. All the Gospels that are now accepted were not accepted at one time. It's now pick and choose what suits you, you accept it. That's what you have done. And you say now it's the Word of God. But now the Word of God is in it, in the book. The Word of God is in the book. The Word of the Prophet is in the book. The Word of the Historian is in the book. And pornography is in the book. Now I have to explain all that to you. I said, you see, I give you examples about the Word of God. Like in the book of Deuteronomy. You see the verse I quoted in Arabic? The same thing is in the Bible. Almost an identical idea is there. It reads, I will raise them up a prophet. I will raise them up a prophet from among the brethren like unto thee. And I will put my words in his mouth. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. So who is this I? God. He's speaking to Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. That I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren. From among the Bani Ismail. The Bani Israel are being addressed is that from among your brethren. Like unto thee, like you, like Musa. And he will, and I will put my words in his mouth. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. So he says, this I is God. You don't have to be a theologian or a DD or an evangelist. Anybody will tell you on the plain reading of it that these are not the words of Moses, these are the words of God. Another quotation from the book of Isaiah, as if God is speaking, and God is speaking. He said, remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. Who's that? Isaiah? No. No Jew says that Isaiah claimed divinity. They would have killed him if he did. No, he's speaking on behalf of God. God is speaking through him like a mouthpiece. This is the job of a prophet of God. He is a mouthpiece of God. He hears the words of God and he conveys them to you. So, I, I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is no savior besides me. Who? God. God is talking. This is the word of God. You don't have to be a professor of theology to see that. There is another type of evidence in the Bible. See, now, if it was a lecture, I would have been, done all this last night. But this is a debate. So whatever the man is throwing at you, you can't start grappling with everything. The caravan is moving, and the dogs start barking. You don't start the caravan moving back to chase the dogs. You've got to move on. You've got to do your job and get, get on with it and finish your job. There was no occasion for explaining all these things to you. you see? Then there is the prophet, word of the prophet of God. Example, Jesus says, it has been said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery, but I say unto you, that whosoever 
look at upon a woman to lust after her, he had committed adultery with her already in his heart. Who is this? I, Jesus. Jesus is talking. The word of a prophet of God. Again, Jesus says, it has been said by them of old time that whosoever puts away his wife, let him give her a bill of divorcement. But I say unto you, who is this? I, Jesus. The words of a prophet of God. Again, Jesus says, it has been said by them of old time, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, who is this? I, Jesus. The words of a prophet of God. Then there is another type of evidence in the Bible. First was as if God speaking. Second was as if a prophet was speaking. Third, what does the historian, how does he speak? He says in the Gospel of St. Mark, so while he, talking about Jesus, in bracket I put Jesus, while he was going forth into the way, he, Jesus, saw a fig tree in the distance with leaves. Happily, he came up to it wanting to find figs thereon. But when he, Jesus, came, there was nothing but leaves, for the season was not yet. Who's writing? An eyewitness or a your witness, not God and not Jesus. So you see, another type of evidence. Word of God, word of the prophet, word of the historian. And there was that other type of thing I was suggesting, and I lost $100. You remember <laughs> if you were there? I lost $100. I wanted Brother Swaggart, you know, to read a certain chapter from the book, from the Bible. And he ignored it at first, maybe he had no time, and somebody from the audience prodded him again. He says, you know, look, what about that chapter as a keel? And there was $100 also involved, so he read it. But he read it at 60, 60 miles an hour. <laughs> so one of your university students, while I'm sitting there, he comes to me. He said, look, he read, but uh, I didn't know. Uh, so what was the joke? I said, look, one thing is, you are at a disadvantage. You are an Arab from Arab country. You don't know English too well, number one. Number two, that the English that he was using were, uh, was archaic, old-fashioned, from the King James Version. You see, uh, we had given him that pamphlet, which was in, from the new international version, modern language, where you call a spade a spade. But he was reading from that archaic Bible. I can't blame him for that because he uses that. King James, he read it. And you don't know English too well. That's also a disadvantage. And he was reading at that speed I told you just now. So these are all the facts. I said, look, what you do, you go and read it you know, in that pamphlet and you see what he was reading. So he read it. You know, bulk of the people, I'm sure, they didn't catch the joke. No, the speed, his pronunciation. He was not as emphatic when he quotes other biblical verses. You know, he makes every word and phrase to go down your throat or down your ears. But here was something different, 60 miles an hour. So, so <laughs> there is that type of thing, which I said, no decent man can read it to his mother, sister, daughter, or even his fiance if she's a good woman. Now, what you have to do is you have to go and read it yourself to know what was read. You didn't catch the joke. It's no fault of mine. You see, you don't understand English too well, and then, you know, there's the speed, and the archaic language, all these things were factors where you don't catch the joke. You see. But if you catch the joke, then, you know, something that no decent man can read in his church or to his family, right? So this is, there's another type of evidence. So we have the word of God in the Bible. There is the word of the prophet in the Bible. There's the word of the historian, an eyewitness or your witness in the Bible. And there is that other type which we say pornography in the Bible. Now, we also have such a thing in Islam. We have the word of God in the Quran. Only Allah's kalam. He doesn't tell you stories. We know an incident in the life of the Prophet wasallam that a Christian deputation had come from Najran in Medina. These were Arab Christians. They had heard that another Arab, he is claiming that he's in communication with the Almighty. He's a prophet. So he said, let's go and cross-examine him. Let us go and see what he knows. So they came to Medina, and they were housed in the Masjid al Nabawi. They ate there, they slept there, and they had a dialogue there for three days and perhaps three nights. And when Sunday came, our Nabi Kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam he offered the Masjid to these Christians to offer their prayers. He was so broad-minded, not like us. See, some of us we are, you know, we think our Masjids are superior to the Masjid al Nabawi that our Nabi had. No doubt in construction, yes. He allowed them 
gave them permission to make their prayers. So during the course of this discussion, the spokesman for the Christian poses the question, among so many other things. Say, all right, now tell us, O Muhammad, what is your concept of God? And our Nabi Kareem, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he doesn't fumble. You know, well, you see, it's like this and like that. No, he doesn't do that. He is the God of Abraham, Moses, and David, and Solomon, you know, who spoke to Abraham. No, he doesn't talk like that. See, when the question is posed, what is your concept of God? So the Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, as if he was pressing his spiritual buttons, trying to contact Filawhim Mahfuz, the head computer. So, oh my Lord, what shall I say? Nobody heard that. There were no buttons to press. I said, as if, I hope you people understand that. Then when I go away, don't create a controversy. He said, Muhammad press buttons. You know, he had a computer. I said, as if, oh my Lord, what shall I say? Comes the answer through him. Qul, say, Hu Allahu Ahad. He is Allah the one and only. Allahu Samad, God the eternal absolute. Lam yalid wa lam yulab. He does not beget and is not begotten. Wa lam yakul lahu kufan ahad. And there's nothing I can do. Full stop. And you see, this is our concept of God. Now you see, it's on a different level. He is made to say, Qul, say. He's asking, oh my Lord, what shall I say? Nobody heard him say that. But comes the answer, say. He doesn't fit into normal speech. They are asking, what is your concept of God? So you don't tell him, say. Somebody asks you, what is 12 times 12? What do you say? 144. Am I right? 6 times 6? 36. You don't say, say 36. Say 144. Do you say like that? No. Why say? Because the words are being put through his mouth. From fi lawham mahfuz. From the preserved tablet. From the head computer. See? He's in contact. He's got that machine. Spiritual buttons. Ya Allah is communicating. What shall I say? He says, say. <laughs> now, that I say. Look, all these things that I told you is not in the Quran. In the Quran, you open Surah Ikhlas, chapter 112, you start. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, in the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Qul huwa Allahu Ahad, say is Allah the one and only. Allahu Samad, God the eternal absolute. Lam yalid wa lam yulad, he does not beget and is not begotten. Walam yakum lahu kufu wa ahad, and there's nothing like unto him. Full stop. That's all. Where he was, what was the occasion, what, how did it come about, nothing. So only the word of God. Everything else, where the details given to us later on. They said, look, this is what happened. People who are eyewitnesses, your witnesses, what's happening. What our Nabi said, what happened. All that put together is our knowledge. You find the other de details in the books of Hadith. Words of the Prophet, separate volume. Allah's Kalam, separate volume. Hadith, words of the Prophet, separate volume. History, Imam Ghazali, Ibn Rush, Ibn Taymiyyah, great writers, great writers, separate books, separate books. And our Arabian Nights, also separate. <laughs> yes? <laughs> you know the Arabian Nights? You know, fairy tales, those filthy, dirty stories were circulating around the campfire. You know, the Arabs also had something to pass time with. You know, pre-Islam, before Islam, and even maybe after Islam. You know, under Harun al-Rashid, Mamun al-Rashid, we don't know how the empire developed. And they were wanting to pass time, you know, somehow, light-heartedness. <laughs> ah, jokes, filthy, dirty stories. You stole around the campfire. Right, they're written now in books. Fitzgerald, he translated it, the Arabian Nights, the unexpurgated edition. I read it and I enjoyed it very much. It was a young boy. Oh, I loved it. You know. The unexpurgated edition. But it's separate. It's not in the Quran. It's not in the works of the sayings of the Prophet. It's not in the works of a historian. Separate book. So we have the words of God, word of the Prophet, word of the historian, and pornography all in separate compartments. <laughs> they have it all in one volume. Wow. Guys, I'm going to the end of this video, guys. I need them to start talking now. Like, that's it. That. Um, I think with the pornography being a Bible, I haven't really, I haven't come across anything of that. Sort. I think it's Sodom and Gomorrah. Come again, Sodom and Gomorrah. So that's the pornography in the Bible. Mm. Mm, okay, I also thought of, I thought of that as well, but 
it was just something like history or something. But I think what he's basically talking about is he's saying that it's like more of the Bible is addition or yes, it's like what historians add. Historians put in words and subtract words. Yeah. The most important things, they rather add history to it. So the Bible is full of history and other things of that sort. Yeah. Of course, I would mm -hmm. I would accept what you said because the Catholics have a different Bible. Yeah. And other and denominations have a different Bible. So I don't understand. You see, with um Christianity, they they said from history, the historians are saying the the, the it's got to a time when the books were so many. So they had to shuffle, like they had to take some out. Yeah. Why should you take something out? At least me with with my view, I am suggesting they should have left it the way it was, That's the why way God said it. You see, they shouldn't take it's like you are hiding. That's something. why he's saying more is like from historians, because yes. it's like different people are writing. Then the way it's okay, which one which one should we take? Of which course. one should, so that's why I think the other denominations like the Catholics and those kind of um Catholic, Roman, they have like more of the books in the Bible than the one I think most of us use. He was also talking about the versions, yeah, New NIV yeah. and King James. Now different, we, different we versions. Also have New King James. But once he's he was talking about calling a speed a speed. NIV will say just as it is, but with King James, yeah, they'll add some. So I think sometimes sound. you even read the same verse, but you get different understandings. Yes, you don't when really you read, guess, yeah, you read it from different uh, versions. You don't really understand it unless you read it. So me, with NIV, NIV is better than, hmm. I'll say NIV is better than King James, because I think NIV to you. says it just as it is, but King James, Tao, those things really <laughs> give different you know. understandings. So you guys are trying to tell me that I need to check this thing again. So you guys are trying to tell me that the Quran is actually more I feel the Quran um, is actually more preserved than the Bible because yeah. since it was given to Muhammad, it's the original written like the original. Yeah, and the there's original. no versions. It's a Quran. We don't yes. have Quran for maybe this this people with no yeah, group of people. It. Yes. So why I feel why it's like that is because it's actually translated. So different it's, organizations are to try Okay, yeah. it translating it too has brought problems. That's why we have it. He but has I think problems with the translation. History tells us that you would understand how you saw it. That's not how someone else understands understands it. Things but break. it's translation. Like, if someone is translating something, it's supposed to give you as... Even if the yeah. words don't have the same impact, the same words, but, but it's going to be the same But meaning. it's it's not something someone has... Like, it's not like an English book you are trying to translate into maybe chi or something. It's a written word. You, you call it Holy Bible. That has really also helped because, let's say... Some of the ways help other people in understanding the Bible. Because let's say before, Christians were not allowed to, you know, use the Bible. It, before, that was before Jesus yeah. Christ. It was only the priests that used to read the Bible to them. And with that one, if the person is even telling lies, she just believe. Yes. The same way is like the Quran. You won't see each and everyone holding Quran around. Yes, you not, hardly not see that. Everyone can actually even the Quran. Yes. I don't know anything about it. That is one thing we Christians do. They hardly... With other, but he's done what at least he know more of both, and then this will help in your faith. Holy, it's a holy something, mm -hmm. so it's it's sacred. You are not just supposed to take yeah. something out. I don't think they have any intention of you, translating it real world to people. But why is me? I have a problem with them having Catholics having their own Bible. They, they are I think it's additional, it's just additional. Something from us, it's they additional. They have almost everything the other Bible have, just that they have additional ones. Yes, that's what I'm saying, which means the Bible we use and what the Catholics are using, it sounds like, uh, I would say it's half. It's they half. removed something. The Catholics would yeah, tell you I haven't poem. used it before, so yeah, I don't really the, know the how Catholics it's... The Catholics would so tell you, you the Pope are trying to hide something. Why you guys mm. are trying to say that the Bible is actually... Fake or I wouldn't say the Bible is really fake, but in really? my perspective, everybody in the opinion. Yeah, from what I heard, it's it's like a lot of people wrote a lot of things and then they just take okay, so they took 
what they took for the normal Bible we see around. But for the Catholics, they added something. That was some of they had a way of measuring, let's say, those who read the Bible because God Himself did not come to write the Bible. Yeah. So when the Bible was written, they use a measure. They have a, a way of measuring it. It's like you're in school. The level you want to go, they have examination they used to test you. So they had a way of testing before they accepting it. But I think with the Catholics, with the normal Bible we have, they did when they tested those parts of it, they didn't accept it. But the Catholics accepted it. That's why they have more versions of it. Oh. But I don't think the teaching they have that made their Bible of more is is not useful. I'm sure it's useful. Yeah, it yeah. Is. So it's the same Jesus Christ they are portrayed. Yeah, we are not saying the Bible is really fake. Here. Oh, the Bible is not fake. It it's can't be fake. It's yeah. not. You you can't really say it's can't be fake because you no, are not. I believe it can't be slam. fake. No, I feel no. No, no, no. Maybe to someone it's fake, but to no, me, I, I feel it's the word of God. Yeah, it's it the word of the God. Word, it means the word of God means. Yeah. No matter how they want to change it. You know, yeah. Muslims I think, actually argue with us. Though they, we have some what? Muslims that were brought up like they had that doctrine that the Bible, the Bible fake. has mistakes. Yeah, I, I once encountered a Muslim who was telling me that he was even giving me verses that um, God didn't say. They are trying, the prophets are trying to put it there. So if I was someone who is not really into this Christian, I don't understand Christian. The same I would, way. I would just accept what he's saying. You see? Oh, this is just about the Bible. The same way someone who also really understands the Bible can also convince uh, someone who doesn't believe in it. The of Bible course. is a Bible. Yes. So I think maybe because you didn't get anything to prove yourself doesn't mean it can't be proven. It can actually be proven. Oh, it can. So somebody can use the same Bible that Muslim used against you to prove him or herself. So Okay. The word of God is so less original. Guys, <laughs> guys, let's to like she has got our channel. They're both so silly and confusing, guys. Guys, yeah. see this time. <laughs>